Welcome to Tech Yes City, and today we're gonna to be reviewing the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte, which starts from 1199 USD. And this is a card that on the surface, if we look at the specs with the 4080 versus the RTX 4090, we see that there is a massive difference in shader count, and there's also 50% more VRAM with 24 gigabytes on the 4090 versus the 4080. And so on the surface, it would look like the RTX 4090 is better value at that 1599 price point, especially if you're a high refresh rate 4K gamer. Though as always, before I'll provide my opinions on this graphics card, I will go through the numbers with you guys here today, the 1080p, 1440p, and 4K raw rasterization numbers, as well as touch on the DLSS 2 and 3 numbers and ray tracing numbers. So let's get in first of all with the 1080p gaming numbers. And here's where I only decided to test two games, and that was Far Cry 6 and also Horizon Zero Dawn. And as you can see at these resolutions at maximum settings, even with the latest and greatest 7950X with 6000 megahertz DDR5 memory, we were pretty much CPU bottlenecked. So just like in my RTX 4090 review, the RTX 4080 is not, in my opinion, a 1080p gaming card. I think if you want to get these graphics cards for 1080p gaming, you are going to be leaving a lot of money and also performance on the table that could be better utilized elsewhere, especially in the own realm of PC gaming. Though let's get into those 1440p and 4K raw gaming numbers where this starts to become a lot more interesting than 1080p. Because if we pull up Apex Legends, for example, this is going to kickstart that trend where we can see that at 1440p, there's not a big difference. We've got the game engine capping this 4090 at 300 FPS, 1440p max settings. Then we have the RTX 4080 coming in with over 250 average FPS, which is actually a sizable increase over the RTX 3090 and also 6900 XT. Then we move over to 4K and here is where the RTX 4090 does start to stretch its legs and you can see that it's not being CPU bound or game engine bound. And so that's coming with roughly an increase of 30% over the 4080. And if we move over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider now, this is a very similar scenario. Both 1440p, we've got 240 average FPS versus roughly 270. And then if we go up to 4K, we can just see that there's now over a 30% difference in FPS between the 4090 and the 4080. However, the 4080 does still come in with a comfortable lead of roughly 50% over that of the RTX 3090. So it is no weak performer, it just in ways I feel gets overshadowed by the RTX 4090 in at least these two benchmarks so far, but you'll start to see that this starts to continue through where Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p shows actually not such a big difference where the 4090, just like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it was getting CPU bound at 1440p. But then if we step up to 4K, it's then showing roughly a 30% favor to the 4090. But moving over to Plague Tale Requiem, here's where we've got 130 average FPS versus 105 at 1440p. So a little bit over a 23% difference there between the 4080 and the 4090 and then stepping things up to 4K actually showed a 38% difference with the 4090 over the 4080, and then the 4080 comfortably beat out the 3090 by roughly 35%. Though on to Far Cry 6, here's where at 4K, we were starting to be a little bit CPU bound, so the 4080 did come closer to that 4090, and then at 1440p, it was pretty similar to 1080p, where it's just not worth it in this game. This does need a CPU, that's ready for some SRS BIZ, or well, that's serious biz. The last title that we're gonna pull up for raw rasterization numbers is Horizon Zero Dawn. At 4K, this showed actually quite a beat down with the 4090 over the 4080, scoring roughly a 40% difference in raw FPS. And then if we look at the difference between the 4080 versus the 3090, I was only looking at a roughly a 20% gain over the 3090. So in some titles, even at 4K, the 4080 is not providing such a huge difference. Though if we step it down to 1440p, here's where the CPU limitations make it so the 4080 is coming in with similar FPS to the 4090. Though after looking at those raw gaming numbers, there's one more very important metric that I have to throw in for discussion. 
And that is the power consumption figures. And here's where if we pull up the Easy Bench benchmark, which is a 4K, really intense Unreal Engine 5 benchmark, this is where I saw some of the best power efficiency. Well, in fact, it's actually the best power efficiency out of a graphics card that I've ever seen. The scores that were showing up here beat everything else out on the chart except for the RTX 4090, but even compared to the RTX 4090, it was offering better per watt, especially per FPS or per point in this benchmark. And I had to double check the from the wall readings here because they were quite low, especially in the case of comparing it on the raw readout numbers versus what was coming out from the wall meter. But ultimately the from the wall numbers, especially if you're testing with the same power supply and everything else is the same on your setup, this is gonna be the most important metric to measure because that's what you're spending money on ultimately when it comes to your power bill. So these from the wall numbers were extremely impressive and what made it even more impressive with the 4080 was that it responded quite well to undervolting. Out of the box, it had roughly a 2.9 gigahertz uh, frequency curve maximum point, which we then dropped down to around 2.75 gigahertz at around 950 millivolt. And it was at these levels that I also increased the memory speeds. And here's where we were able to get very similar performance in EasyBench at 4K, but drop that power consumption down quite considerably. So undervolting with the RTX 4080, just like the 4090, I do heavily recommend it. Though after looking at those power consumption numbers, here's where I'm left a little bit confused. Where with the case of this graphics card, the cooler itself is pretty much identical to the RTX 4090 cooler, same dimensions. In fact, it only weighs around 30 grams lighter than the 4090, and that's due to the increases in the silicon size and more VRAM on the 4090. But I feel like as we go through these temperatures, the massive size of this cooler is going to make it so that you've got extremely low noise, extremely good temperatures, but I feel like it's a wasted opportunity for people who want a smaller card, especially for someone like me who uses a mini ITX rig, believe it or not, as their main computer, I would love to see this come in a smaller format, say for instance, the size of an RTX 3080 Ti, which I believe something like this could easily fit into. And so I'm actually going to be personally looking at maybe perhaps trying to install the RTX 3080 Ti cooler on this 4080 so I can then put it in my mini ITX rig because what we'll pull up here, which sort of segues in with the temperatures and the noise and also the power consumption is the productivity numbers where if we pull up a blender, for instance, the numbers are much higher than an RTX 3090. They are trailing a 4090 by quite a bit. So I feel like the 4080 in particular would make for a much better mate with the two slot solution and also having it run shorter than the RTX 4090's behemoth cooler, which on that size graphics card with some of the power consumption it can use, especially when it's uncapped, is justified for that kind of cooler. They continue on with the V-Ray benchmarks, the CUDA and also the ray tracing performance does show performance of that in between the RTX 3090 and the RTX 4090. Though it just wouldn't be a review of an RTX graphics card without talking about ray tracing itself. And here's where I decided to put up two games here, which is Cyberpunk 2077, the ray tracing on the 4080. You can benefit greatly when you decide to turn on DLSS 2. I prefer the quality setting. So all the benchmarks you see with DLSS 2 will be with the quality setting on. And here's where you can get a smooth experience with the RTX 4080 in this game. And you've also got the option to turn on DLSS 3, where we tested this also with Plague Tale Requiem. And in both these titles, I thought DLSS 3 did a decent job. As long as you weren't moving around too fast, then you could start to notice some artifacting. But I think, for instance, in Plague Tale Requiem, as I was running down the hill, I was like, wow, okay, DLSS 3 is giving a smooth experience or giving me more FPS and it's doing so without looking actually really bad at all. It was only when I started to move the mouse left and right really fast that I did start to notice some artifacting. So depending on the game and if it's really fast motion paced, then I would recommend either turning it off or on, but that's up to you, the user, and it is good to see a technology like this within a month has come a very long way. Where if you go to my 4090 review, I was pretty much stating that the DLSS 3 experience was buggy, it needed some work, and then coming back to it a month later, 
it's working a lot better. I didn't have one crash in any of the titles I was testing it on, but I did notice that I would prefer to keep this off for competitive multiplayer titles or when I did need to keep the input lag to the absolute minimum. But if I'm playing a game like Plague Tale, for example, it's gonna add that smoother experience and it's gonna add the extra FPS. Though we're so close now to that final conclusion, recommendation, thoughts and opinions, but we'll quickly go over the graphics card itself. You've got here two massive fans, same dimensions as the RTX 4090, and this one, I'm happy to say, doesn't have any wobbling like I had on the RTX 4090. When I took a look at that, it actually had a wobbly fan on it, and so this one doesn't feature any wobbly fans. On the back, it also features a single HDMI 2.1 out, as well as three DisplayPort 1.4s, and I would like to see more HDMI 2.1s in the future. I think these are very flexible ports. They work with the 4K OLEDs. It's what you need for those monitors, especially if you're buying the current generation. And of course, HDMI 2.1 will work brilliantly with a lot of the monitors that are going to hit the market in 2023. In terms of the RTX 4080 design, it's got the logo, the GeForce RTX, which lights up white, as well as the little X on the front facing panel lights up as well with the white LED. And then you've got your 12 volt 16 pin connector, well, 12 bigger pins than the four sense pins. And that requires three eight pin PCIe connectors if you're using the adapter. And so this differs from the 4090 in that that needed four eight pin PCIe's, this only needs three eight pin PCIe. Also when it comes to this connector itself, I haven't had any problems. I've tried bending it at ridiculous angles. I've tried uh, leaving it a little bit out. In that case, when I left the connector a little bit unconnected, the graphics card actually cut out. So I've had no melting power supplies or no melting connectors. And I've even for a lot of my testing been using piggyback eight pin cables, even on the 4090, and I've had absolutely no issues, and that's even with an 850 watt power supply. So if you're getting the RTX 4080 and you've already got, say, an 850 watt power supply too, you don't have to worry about upgrading your current power supply. You should be good to go. And now with all the data out of the way, it's time to give you guys that clean cut conclusion, my thoughts and opinions on this GPU right here. And unlike the 4090, which I thought made a whole lot of sense, it was just a new graphics card in a completely new league, the 4080 is going to be a bit of a tougher sell. And that's mainly because if you're going for this price point of 1199 USD, you've then got the 4090 there with its maximum potential, its maximum performance, and you're probably thinking, well, there's never been such a big difference between the 80 and 90 cards. And I believe that to be true as well. If we look back in the history of NVIDIA GPUs, the 90 series was, the last time I could think of a performance difference so big was maybe the GTX 690 versus the 680, but that was a different kettle of fish altogether where that was an SLI card, that was two GPUs, and in certain titles you really saw no benefit whatsoever. This here is a straight clean cut card that performs at a lower echelon than the 4090, but it still does perform quite a significant chunk faster than the RTX 3090. And so I'm feeling at this price point, it's not only a tough sell from the RTX 4090 and that's gonna push a lot of people to just go out and get a 4090, but I feel like as well, you've then got the existing cards that are out there on the market, the RTX 3000 series cards. There can be extremely good deals to be had on RTX 3080s, RTX 3070s, 3060 Ti's, 3090s, all those cards are being discounted, whether it's on the new market or the used market, you can get tremendously good value out of all those cards. And then to further complicate matters, you then got the triple threat or the three-pronged attack on the 4080, and that's coming from next month's launch from AMD with their RX 7900 XTX, which if you're on the fence on $1,200, then it is a safer play in my opinion just to wait for the time being. As we don't know what that's going to bring, that could give a massive performance increase. So it would be wise to wait and see the numbers, especially if you're just in it for the raw 4K or 1440p gaming numbers, that would be a wise decision just to wait 
and see what that brings to the table. There's no harm in waiting a couple of weeks. Uh, this thing is going to be on the shelves, I'm pretty sure, in a couple of weeks as well. I don't think the appeal is quite there as it is as the RTX 4090. And so there it is with the RTX 4080. It's a good card, but it's not a great card like the 4090 was when I reviewed that. And I feel like that combined with all the other factors that we spoke about in today's video, make it so that there's so many shadows being cast over the 4080 where its biggest shining point was that power efficiency. And I feel like with the size of this cooler, it was a missed opportunity as well for mini ITX builders, uh, myself included. So I would like to see smaller editions of this card hit the market, and then I'll be getting pretty excited for it and what I can do with it, as opposed to the 4090, since it's the same size as the 4090, it's gonna fit into the exact same cases that the RTX 4090 is going to do. And so if you got the $1,200, might as well just save up and get the $1,600 card that has more than 33% total performance. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the RTX 4080 Founders Edition card. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the 4080. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which we're bringing back. You guys want to see the question of the day come back. And this is from KG... Corvette, and they ask, any way can one check if a card has been used for mining? So if you are quickly inspecting a graphics card and it's not even hooked up to a test bench, for instance, the easiest way to check if it's been on a mining bench is to look very closely at the fans. For instance, I've got this RTX 2060 that I got here for an extremely good price off the internet. It works fine, but when I closely inspect underneath the fans, I can tell that this hasn't been in a case. It's got an incredible amount of dust buildup, and that's because it wasn't in a case with any dust filters. Most of the time, a gaming card is going to be in a case with dust filters, so it's gonna have a lot less dust on it than a graphics card that's been used on a mining bench, especially with RTX 3000 series cards, as well as RX 6000 series cards. Though, when it comes to buying cards, that have been used on mining test benches. I'll be making a full guide so you guys don't get ripped off, you don't get hosed. I look forward to bringing that one for you. And so if you want to see that the moment it drops, just like any other tech video at Tech Air City, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell for the notifications to get the videos as soon as they drop. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.